Hi there, today I'm going to show you how you can use your own custom fonts in your Phaser 3 game. So in the demo on the screen here, we have three Phaser 3 text game objects. One of them has the default family font family applied to it, and the other two are using custom fonts. Uh, the middle one here is using the Google uh, Press Start to Be uh, font here. Uh, and it's being applied to our text game object. And then our third one is using a local font file that we've loaded into our game, and we're applying that font face to this text game object. And this one is from Kenny's Assets. And so, in order to make this magic happen, all we need to do is use a third-party library uh, called the Web Font Loader. And what this library does is it allows you to load in your web fonts, and then once they're ready, uh, you can go ahead and apply them uh, to your uh, Phaser 3 game objects. And this can all be done with just a few lines of code. So if you're interested in following along, there'll be a link in the description of the video uh, that will have the starter code that we'll be using uh, in this video. There'll also be a link to complete a source code if you'd like to go ahead and grab that. All right, so to get started, if you go ahead and download that zip folder, uh, you'll see the folder structure similar to this. And inside this folder, uh, there is an assets folder that has the custom font for uh, Kenny's fonts that we'll be using, as well as the license. And it's going to have a few other files. And the main ones that we're focused on is the index.html. And then under source, there will be the main.js. And so in our index.html, this is just a basic web page that is referencing two third-party libraries. Uh, one of them is the phaser3 library. And the second one is the web font loader library uh, that I referenced earlier. And so both of these are being loaded over the CDN. And they're adding those scripts to our page. Uh, then on the web page, we are referencing a custom script, the main.js file. And so currently in here, there's not much happening. Uh, the main thing is, is we're creating a phaser three game instance. Uh, we're referencing our game container uh, for our canvas element. And then we are creating our main scene. And so in our main scene, uh, basically we're just creating three text game objects and we're adding that text to our canvas element here and so you'll see here if you run the file on your local web server uh, you'll just see default font family press start 2p and the kenny future narrow and they're all using the default font family that's applied to all phaser 3 text game objects so in order to work with our own custom fonts, we need a way to load in those fonts and then apply them to our web page. And the web font loader library uh, gives this a common interface to go ahead and load these fonts regardless of their source. Uh, so as an example, this library can load fonts from Google Fonts, Typekit, Fonts.com, uh, and many others, as well as the option for you to provide your own custom fonts and then apply those as well. Uh, so it's a very common library and it's very useful. And so to use this library, uh, the first thing is you have to reference it on in your code base. And so there's a few ways to do this. You can either uh, reference it over the CDN. Uh, you could install it through NPM, uh, however you want to do it. Uh, for this example, we'll be doing it through the CDN, and you can find a link to that here in the README. And so once we have the library loaded, uh, which we do, what this will do is it's going to expose a web font uh, object on the global window. And what we need to do is provide web font a configuration of the fonts that we would like to utilize. All right, so now that we have a high level uh, idea of what we need to do in our code, uh, we're going to go ahead and implement that now. Uh, so in the uh, code base, uh, under the source and lib folder, there will be this web font loader JS file. And all this does is it exports out that window.webfont um, namespace. So then that way we can work with it. Um, so typically what I like to do in the code is instead of referencing that global object, I like to import it from a library like this. And then that way in the future, if you ever want to switch to NPM, uh, you can easily uh, change these import statements without having to worry about that global uh, window object everywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to do import star as our web font loader from our lib and then we'll have our web font loader.js. 
So now that we have our web font loader, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and provide that configuration for the uh, fonts that we like to utilize. So what we'll do is we'll do our Google font first and so we can see how it works. So inside our create method for our scene, we'll come to the bottom of it and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our web font loader and then we're going to reference default and then we're going to call the load function. And so inside here, we provide the configuration that we like to use. And so since we're loading a Google font, we'll provide the Google property. And inside here, you can provide families. And so this is an array of the Google fonts that you would like this library to go ahead and load for you. So we're going to do the press start 2P library. And so what this is going to do is if we pop over to our console, go into our network tab, it's going to go ahead and call the Google APIs to get that font and it's going to make that get request. And so now we have that font available on our web page. So the next thing we need to do is now that we have loaded in our font, uh, we need to apply it to our text game object once we fully loaded that. And this is very easy to do with our configuration. What we can do is they have this active property and basically this allows you to provide a callback that will be invoked once uh, the libraries have uh, finished loading and they're uh, available to use. So what we can then do is on our text game object, we can go ahead and call the set font family method. And this will allow us to provide the font family that we like to apply. And so what we'll do is we're going to do our press start 2P. And so we're gonna go ahead and add these additional quotes inside there uh, because there are spaces. Uh, so we want to make sure we go ahead and capture that exact string. And then what we're going to do is we will just call the set color method. So then that way it'll cause phaser to re-render our text game object. So if we do FFF, FFF, we'll apply white. And you'll see right away when our scene re-renders, as soon as our font is ready, it is applied to our text game object. And now we have our first custom uh, font. All right, so now that we know how to reference uh, a third party uh, font like Google Fonts, uh, we're gonna take a look at how we can use our own custom fonts. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop back over to our library here. And so to use our own custom fonts, uh, what we need to do is we need to provide the custom property on our configuration. And then we need to provide the font families that we want to uh, use. And so there's a few ways we can specify this. We can provide a CSS file that will have our at font faces, or if those are already on our web page, we can omit this URLs. And so to do that, what we'll want to do is come to our index.html page. What we'll do is in our head tag, we're going to go ahead and add in our font face to our existing style tag. So if we do at font face, we can then specify our font family. And so this is going to be called Kenny Future Narrow. And then for our URL, this is going to be the URL to where our custom font file uh, exists. And so for the existing project, this will be under the assets folder, and then it's going to be under fonts, and then it's going to be the Kenny Future Narrow uh, TTF file. The one I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna specify the format just so it's explicit, and I'm gonna do true type. And so this is going to go ahead and load in our custom font file, and it's going to provide this font family uh, to our web page. And so then what we need to do is in our code, we need to tell our web font loader to load in this font file and wait for it to be ready before we apply it to our game objects. And so to do that, all we need to do is come into our configuration. We're going to add in a new uh, field, a uh, new property, and we're going to call it custom. And so inside here, uh, we just specify our families. Uh, so similar to what we did for the Google one. And now this just needs to match our font face name. So if we just copy the Kenny future and arrow here, and we apply that here, and that should be an array, then what we'll want to do is once that is loaded, Inside our active callback, we'll just want to apply that to the text game object that we want to apply it to. So we'll do set font family, 
and we will set that to our Kennedy Future Narrow, and we'll also call the set color method. So now if we save and we come back to our game, you'll see now our third game object, it now has that font family applied to it. And that's it. So with these few lines of code, we see how easy it is to go ahead and load in our custom fonts and reference them from third-party services and apply those to our custom uh, text game objects. So just as a reminder, there'll be a link to the completed source code of this demo uh, in the link of this video. Uh, if you like the content, please go ahead and like the video and subscribe. Uh, if you have any ideas for future content that you can be see covered on the channel, uh, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. And if you'd like to see more great Phaser 3 content, check out some of the links on your screen now.